welcome everybody. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to be here. So we're now in the fifth episode of season one masterclass. And um, I hope you guys were part of the journey and you were able to watch all our previous episodes as well. In case you haven't seen our previous episodes, uh, Saket would be, um, you know, sharing a link so that you can go and, you know, brush up on our previous episodes where we go into detail about the major ITS and practices like incident management, uh, employee onboarding or service request management, change enablement, IT asset management, and so on. I'm sure those uh, sessions would be really useful for you where you can learn a lot of best practices and different ways you can, uh, you know, leverage the capabilities available to you in Service Desk Plus, take it back to your organizations and, you know, tailor fit it to meet your unique business requirements. After all, we try our best to ensure that you are able to do effective ITSM for your organization. All right, so without further ado, let me just quickly introduce myself. So my name's Jendra John Xavier, and I'm a product expert, and I will be hosting the session today. So this session is going to be a little different from our previous sessions, where in our previous sessions, we went into detail and, you know, we broke down features, capabilities, and saw how you can use them. But today, being the last episode of the season, we are going to be doing a roundup of the latest features that have been released for Service Desk Plus. Just to make sure, we are talking about the on-premises version of Service, Plus, uh, Service Desk Plus today. So we are going to be looking at all the exciting new enhancements and features that have come out. And we are constantly listening to your feedback and trying to understand your unique use cases, and we're trying to come up with features and capabilities to bridge that gap. Okay, so I hope you guys are ready. Let's jump into the agenda for today. So we're going to be looking at some of the major features or major enhancements for features that have been released over the past six months. So we're going to be looking at the enhancements to business rules and how now you can automate condition-based assignment of facilities for service requests. We're going to be looking at the introduction of SaaS uh, license management using the integration with Microsoft 365, how you can streamline knowledge management with our latest enhancements to the solutions, how you can integrate with over 650 third-party third-party applications using Zoho Flow. And finally, we have an entire 15 to 20 minutes dedicated to Analytics Plus and the integration between Service Desk Plus and Analytics Plus. So I have Nicholas with me, who's a product expert for Analytics Plus, who would be going over that. So don't miss out your chance to learn more about business intelligence and how you can leverage that uh, from within Service Desk Plus. All right, so now let's jump into the first um, into the first enhancements. So how um, the different enhancements that have been released for business rules. So now with business rules, you can, um, first of all, assign SLAs to service requests using business rules. And not only that, we also have business rules for notes and notifications as well. And additionally, you can use a custom function as a condition for business rules. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at all of these features in Service Desk Plus. Due to the lack of time, we won't be able to go really into detail about each feature and enhancement, but we will be giving you a quick overview of what they do and, you know, what is available for you. All right, so let's jump into Service Desk Plus. So this must be a familiar site for all of you who are using Service Desk Plus. So we have the request tab, but we are talking about business rules, right? So let's jump into the admin tab and let's scroll down under automations. We have our business rules listed over here. So let me click on business rules. And let me first uh, go ahead into a business rule and show you the different enhancements available to you. So let me edit this business rule. So now, like I was telling you earlier, right? 
we have the ability to apply conditions using custom functions. So you can go ahead, write your new custom functions, and then use that as a condition. Maybe you can pull in data using an API call or whatever conditions that might be, you need for your business requirements. So now we give you the ability to do that as well. And now moving on to actions, let's see the different new actions that are available. So now if we select, uh, select custom actions, we see that there are a couple of um, options available to us. So we have the if, if, and if, else. So this is really interesting because based, uh, so first of all, based on a condition, a business rule is triggered. But now let's say based on, you know, different kinds of, for example, categories. Let's say your, your main condition, you're going to trigger your condition and then um, you need to perform different actions based on different categories. How do you do that? Previously, we would have to create multiple different business rules, right? But now we simple, simplified it by giving you the ability to create if if actions. So what if if actions basically means is you can create different actions for different conditions and you can add multiple of those up to 10 if if actions in a single business rule. So it's going the business rule is going to see if it matches a certain condition. If it matches the conditions, it, it is going to perform the action. If not, it is just move, going to move on to the next if condition and see if it matches and then perform the action. So now. Like I said earlier, let's select the, uh, the category. If the category is going to be hardware, then I'm going to do a certain field update. Like, let's say I'm going to set the priority as, you know, high. All right. And now let me go add a new if condition, an if condition action. So now if the category is software or you know something else um, yeah, software let me go and add a different field update so now the priority for software is going to be um, you know medium so this way i can actually create multiple different if condition actions right within a single business rule and this should make things a little bit easier for when you're trying to you know set up your automations so basically that is the if if uh, action so now let me go ahead and show you the if else now this is similar to if if but instead of let's say if uh, it doesn't meet a certain condition then you can set an else action right over here so again going to category is hardware if the category is hardware then i'm going to uh, set the priority as um, high and if it doesn't match this particular condition, then I'm going to set an else action as a field update um, and update the priority as medium or so on. So again, you can create multiple, um, you can create if then actions right over here. So again, this is just, you know, giving you more options so that, you know, you can set up automations the way you want for your unique business actions. So now moving on to the next one, which is, uh, you know, business rules to set an um, SLA. So I can add a rule over here under service. Uh, so business rules for service requests. And over here under the select custom action, again, I have the if, if, if else condition, conditional action, and also the select SLA option over here. So now the different SLAs that I have created for my service request will show up over here and I can go and select it and then, you know, set a condition for when this SLA needs to be applied. Now I can do it over here from my business rule itself, or I can go over to service level agreements and under the service tab, I can set, you know, the details over here. I can configure it over here as well. I can go create a new SLA. Um, let me just open an SLA that's already created. So it's easier to see that. So one, I can associate the SLA to templates uh, or I can use a business rule to associate this SLA automatically and I can do it from over here as well. So that is service. Um, so that is using business rules to automatically assign um, an SLA based on conditions. Now going back to um, the business rules. 
let me show you business rules for notes and notifications as well. So now you can actually create uh, business rules for your notes that are being created within your ticket, right? So let's say you open your ticket. Uh, you know the notes feature, right? So you can go and add notes that are, you know, shared within only technicians, or you can make this note public and share it to your requesters as well. So now let me just give you a very simple, very easy use case, right? Let's say there is a known error for a particular type of incident and your technicians are informing your requesters that it is a known error by creating a note. Okay, so this note needs to be, you know, uh, shown to the requester, right? But let's say your technicians, they're working on multiple different uh, tickets. There's always the chance for human error, right? So how do you rectify this? Um, you can set up a business rule that automatically marks the uh, note uh, to show it to requesters. So let me show you right now. I'm just going to select uh, create a note with the uh, text as test. And I didn't mark show to requester, right? And we can see it is a private note. But let's go to the business rule and let me show you this business rule. So I'm setting the condition as note content contains known error. So if the note contains known error, then I'm going to mark the field show to requester as true. So that is the action I'm performing. So now this business rule is active. Let's go ahead and see what happens. So when I go and edit it to known error, Let's see what happens. Again, note I'm not marking this. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now we can see it is marked as a public note, right? So now the requester can see. This just ensures that, you know, quality of life improvements and you can ensure, like you have the control to automate a lot of different tasks for even notes as well. And similarly for notifications, you have a bunch of different actions that you can perform. So Let's say I have set up another, you know, quick example. Let's say if um, any notification that is sent to a VIP user, let's say one of your C-level executives, in this case, is, it's Jane Rajan, okay? So now, um, whenever an email is sent to Jane Rajan, either, uh, you know, um, from the system or from uh, the technician, I want to copy another email address or another technician so that they are aware that this notification is being sent to a VIP user. So I can go and automatically set the field update within my notification and uh, copy a particular technician to this notification. So again, this, these are features just to give you that extra bit of customizability so that you can set up Service Test Plus according to your unique business requirements. All right, so basically these are the enhancements that have been introduced for business rules. So I hope this is useful and you're able to take this back to your organization and use this in interesting use cases for your business requirements. So anyway, moving on to the next feature, which is the integration with Microsoft 365. So using this integration, you can actually perform SaaS license management within Service Desk Plus. So basically, you can track all your Microsoft 365 subscriptions and licenses right from within Service Desk Plus. Now, we know how everybody is moving to subscription-based licenses, right? Gone are the days of perpetual licenses. So now we have subscriptions that need to be renewed continuously. Nobody wants to get up to a nightmare of, let's say, all your employees losing access to Microsoft Word just because the license expired, right? So again, it just makes things a little easier for you to track it all from one place without having to jump between different applications. So now let's look at this particular integration. So now let's go back to the admin tab and see how you can set up the integration. Scroll down to apps and add-ons. Click on integrations, and if we click on uh, the third-party tab, we, hit, we can see that the integration is available over here, Microsoft 365. You can go ahead and, you know, configure your integration from here at the details so that you are able to pull in data from your Azure AD. So whatever information you have in Azure AD, it is going to be pulled into Service Desk Plus. So the licenses need to be associated properly in your Azure AD. So now we go over to the Assets tab, scroll down to Software, 
And now we have Microsoft 365 tab over here. I'm going to click on this and all my details are easily available from me. So I can see the available units, um, purchase units, assigned units, and so on. So this is a quick overview of all the different subscriptions, licenses, suite licenses I have available. And under users, I can see these details individually. So I can see each user, see the services that they're using right from here. Just make things a little bit easier to track and manage. So uh, you can't, you know, associate licenses from within service or subscriptions from within service this plus that needs to be done from Azure side, but you can track and keep an eye on what's happening from service this plus. All right. So basically this is what uh, the Microsoft 365 integration is. So this is basic SaaS license management available for you within service this plus. All right. So now, Moving on to the next uh, feature, which is tracking software usage accurately with uh, the latest enhancements to software metering. So keeping in theme with compliance that we saw earlier with Microsoft integration as well, we've actually brought in a couple of integrations to uh, a couple of enhancements, I mean, to our software metering as well. So if we go over under software and click on software summary, we can see that we have a new widget over here, which gives you in the dashboard, right? Quick information of frequently used uh, software and software that is never being used. So you can keep a track of all the software available in your organization and see how the users are using them. And you can identify software that is not being you know, used a lot and you can try to optimize your software usage and cut down on costs on software that is not being used by anyone, right? So yeah, so how do you set this up? Um, just a quick note uh, for this um, software metering to work, you need endpoint central license, you need an endpoint central instance. So basically the details that are being scanned or the information that is being scanned by endpoint central is going to be pushed into service test plus and you can track the details over here. So how do you set this up? Let's go back to the admin tab and under customization and asset management, we have the tab called software metering. So if we click on this, you can go and set up your details over here. So you can select the software that you want to monitor and then based on either runtime or run count or both of these variables, you can you know, configure thresholds. So if the software is being used for less than 10 hours, you can mark it as rarely used, more than 90 hours frequently used. Again, this is, you know, completely dependent on your business requirement and how you want to set it up, all right? So this is software metering, very simple feature, but can be really helpful for you to keep, you know, a tight hold on how software is being used in your organization, because let's be honest, software is expensive. And if you, you know, if you don't manage it or track it properly, you can quickly spend a lot of money, a lot of your budget just on software. And, you know, we always try to optimize our spend so that we are being as efficient as possible, especially given economic headwinds, right? Everybody's trying to be as, you know, conservative with spend as possible. So this is just another feature to help you out. And moving on to the next uh, feature, which is streamlined knowledge management. So we brought in a couple of exciting enhancements to solutions, some features that have been asked uh, a lot by our customers. So we are glad to, you know, help you and bring these capabilities for you to help you improve your knowledge management in your for your organization. So now we have an association tabs for solutions so that you can view all the, uh, you know, uh, tickets or requests and incidents that have been resolved by a particular solution. And not only that, you can also now mark as solutions as solutions that have been tried, but they did not resolve the ticket. And all of those details will be available right under your solution. Now, this helps you measure and, uh, you know, monitor if your solutions are being effective and you can, you know, uh, bring in continuous improvements so that you are improving solutions so that they are actually useful for your 
both technicians and end users. And not only that, we also brought in new ways to you know, give feedback. So now users and technicians can add comments to solutions in addition to the feedback, like marking it as useful or not that was previously available. And not only that, we also give you the ability to disable the comments and reset the ratings of a solution. So let's say when you go ahead and edit or update a solution, you can reset, uh, reset the rating so that you know it is accurate. Let's go to solutions right now and see all of these features. So under the solutions tab, let me open a solution real quick and scroll down to the bottom. We can see, first of all, we have the feedback tab where I can go and add comments like it's a good solution or was helpful. Or in case it needs to be updated, I can also add that details over here and choose to show it to, a requ to the requesters or just keep it within the technicians itself. And I can also go mark it as helpful uh, if it really was helpful. Add a comment and it's available over here and we can see if it is private or public as well. So just to make it a little easier so that you don't have to open the comment and see it. Um, now moving over to associations, we can see uh, the solution of, of, with all the requests it is associated with over here, associated with problems. And you can also link solutions with other relevant solutions as well right from here. So all the information you would need about your solution in one place. And not only can you mark solutions uh, that are associated to requests, but you can also see the solutions that this, uh, see the request that this particular solution helped resolve. If I go ahead and click on this toggle, I can see that this solution helped resolve this particular uh, request. Now, let me just quickly go ahead and show you that. So over here, we have a tab called tried solutions. So I can try a solution and then see if it resolved the issue or not. Okay, so you can do it all from here and track the details over here. So these are just features that help you, you know, improve your solutions in the long run and make it useful for your technicians and end users. So now I hope you can go try this out in your own organization as well. As you can see, it's already available for you. There's no setup required. You just need to go and use it right out of the box. Okay, so now moving on to the next feature, which is the ability to configure Microsoft Graph mailboxes. For those of you who are very security conscious, this is a great feature for you because now we enable modern authentication with OAuth for improved security for your mailbox. So for let me just go ahead and open up the settings so I can show it to you. Oh, yep. Let's go to admin, mail server settings, and let's click on the details over here. Cool. So now we have the different connection protocols available to us, like POP, IMAP, and so on. So now um, POP, IMAP would be slowly, we'd be moving away from that, right? So we are going to go to more, you know, more, uh, more secure ways with using modern authentication. So you can use Microsoft Graph now. Uh, it's very simple to set up. You can go select your graph endpoint based on your region or location. And then add the details over here, um, you can add your client ID, your client secret, or uh, authentication UR, authorization URL, and set up your Microsoft Graph as your mail server. So the mail server, for those of you who might not be aware, is uh, the way through which Services Plus receives and sends out email notifications and emails. So this is how you can accept emails that are going to be converted to tickets and how you can send out emails and notifications from within Service Desk Plus. So now you have this option as well so that you are, you know, staying updated with the latest uh, security um, uh, features as well. So that's Microsoft Graph, really uh, plain and simple. If you need any help setting up Microsoft Graph for your organization, please feel free to reach out to us. All right, so now moving on to the next feature, which is uh, really the interesting feature, right? Uh, the 650 third-party applications is always a great uh, tag, right? And who doesn't love integrations? The ability to, you know, work with different third-party applications. No organization uses a single software or single application, right? 
there are multiple different applications that are working together to make your business run or your business operations run smoothly. So your organization workflows will involve multiple different applications, right? So how do you connect all of them together? How do you facilitate the exchange of information between Service Desk Plus and a third party application? An example would be like your, uh, let's say you're using Service Desk Plus to track certain, you know, the development of your software and your developers, they don't want to use Service Desk Plus, they actually use Jira. So how do you ensure that you collaborate between two different software like this? Previously, you'd have to go and, you know, create really complicated scripts or code and, you know, bring in API keys so that uh, information is, you know, uh, transferred between different applications. But we've simplified this entire process using Zoho Flow, which helps you build these connections with a plethora of third party applications. And not only that, setting up these integrations or building these uh, information exchange workflows are very simple and intuitive and i'm going to show you how this works so basically the information is uh, you know transferred between these applications using the zoho flow agent and if you're interested to see how you can set this up for your organization please let us know in chat and we'd share you the uh, form where you can go and sign up for zoho flow all right so now let's go and head and look at how simple and how interesting this entire process is so now i'll open up my flow and over here we can see the applications that are available so you can go and search for the application that you want and you can create your flow and good news is um we love intuitive drag and drop canvases, right? Because that's the easiest way to build something. It's just like using building blocks. It's like a flow chart, right? You just go and simply build it. So here are the different, you know, actions available as blocks within each third party application. So now since uh, the example I gave was Jira, let's see how you can set this up for Jira. So if I click on Jira Cloud or Jira Service Management, the different actions available to me are you know, displayed over here. So I can create a comment, create an issue, create projects, create users, fetch projects, and so on. So whatever you want to you know, configure or build, you can do it right from here. How do you do it? You just drag and drop and add it, and that's how you configure it. Fairly simple, right? So now let me show you how this works in real time. So I'm gonna go and test my Zoho flow, uh, the flow I created and see how it works. So now I'll just wait for things to get uh, you know, activated. Now I'm going to jump back into Service Desk Plus, go to the request tab or wherever. I'm just gonna create a new request. So now I've set this flow up in such a way that if a ticket is created with a particular template, then it is automatically going to create a ticket within uh, Jira as well. So I'm going to select the template, select the requester who's uh, requesting this particular ticket, and I'm going to add the request. One in interesting thing is uh, Zia suggestions. For those of you who don't know, you can actually configure Zia uh, so that it's learning based on past information, uh, ticket information, and give you know in intelligent suggestions. So in this case, this particular template is mostly being used for software. So it is automatically suggesting that I mark the category as software right over here. I can choose to apply, you know, accept or reject this suggestion just uh, right over here. So since this is relevant to me, I'm going to uh, select uh, the category as software and just click it over here. Just wanted to give you, uh, you know, a quick overview of how that worked for those of you who were not aware of it. All right, so now my ticket has been created, a familiar view for everybody, it's your ticket workspace. And now the ticket has been created in Service Desk Plus. Let's go back to uh, Jira and see what happens over here. Let me do a quick refresh and just wait for a bit. So usually the uh, ticket will be created in uh, real quick, oh, just like that, right? We saw it happen in real time. 
the ticket has been created and an issue has been, um, and it has been created in Jira. So we see that without any coding, any scripting required, we just created a flow that was very simple to create and is functional. And we saw how quick that was, right? Instantaneously, the ticket is being created in Jira as well. And you can go back to the flow. And if we click on history, we can see that uh, the test has been created and the time taken was just five seconds and we can see the status as completed. Now, this is just a very, very simple example of how Flow works um, and, uh, you know, just to show you the capabilities that are available. Uh, like I showed you guys earlier, you can create multiple different flows and, you know, uh, set it up with Service Desk Plus or the on-premises version. And uh, there are almost 600 plus applications available for you. So if you have any questions on how to set this up, write to us and we'd be happy to help you out or... Um, you know, you could read our help documentation as well on how you can set this up. So really simple, right? Um, so that brings us to the end of the features that we saw for Service Test Plus. And before I, you know, hand over the session to Nicholas, uh, who is going to go over Analytics Plus and the integration with Analytics Plus, I'll just do a quick recap for you. So we saw business rules, the enhancements available to you. How you can use custom function as a condition to trigger the business rule, the different actions available to you, how you can use uh, business rules to automatically assign an SLA to a service request, business rules for notes and notifications. We saw, um, we saw how you can set up um, the mail server using Microsoft Graph. We saw how you can integrate with Microsoft 365, improve compliance efforts with uh, by tracking your uh, subscriptions and licenses with Microsoft 365 and software metering. And we also saw how you can, you know, enhance or improve solutions in your organization using associations and the comments feature that has been released. And finally, we saw how using Zoho flows you can build intuitive and, uh, you know, really advanced workflow aut automation across your business operations, across your different applications using Zoho Flow. So now I'm going to go over and hand over the session to Nicholas. Uh, don't worry, guys. It's a very interesting session where you can learn more about business intelligence and how you can leverage Analytics Plus with uh, Service Desk Plus. So... Let me just uh, hand over the session to Nicholas. Thank you. I'm Nicholas, the product expert for Manage Engine Analytics Plus, which is an outstanding business intelligence solution from Manage Engine. Leveraging my existence with respect to the product and uh, with my extensive experience working alongside different ID leaders in uh, diverse industries. I have assisted them in extracting valuable insights from their IT data and also enabling them to make informed decision. So today, I'm going to showcase the capabilities of Analytics Plus through Service Test Plus integration, which can greatly enhance the productivity, efficiency, workflows, and the overall quality of decision making. So in this episode, we will be discussing on how to integrate the service test plus with analytics, how to leverage the performance dashboards and reports to track the efficiency, and how to enhance help desk productivity through advanced analytics, and how to cultivate a culture of data-driven decision-making within the help desk, right? So let's get into the topic. Um, the first one is going to be how to set up the integration. So before I actually go ahead and set up the integration, I would uh, like to discuss prerequisites for integration. So the first and foremost thing is the service display should have the access from the uh, server where it is installed to the Analytics Plus instance, meaning, uh, both the servers, like the Service Test Plus and the Analytics Plus server, should have a active connecti connectivity between them. So you can verify this by launching the Service Test Plus web client 
from the analytics plus install server and if both the applications are installed on the same server then you don't have to worry about the connectivity and then uh, both this services plus and analytics plus servers should be running in the same time zone and the bill number of your services plus should be about 9204 and finally only services plus admins can set up, set up this integration so with that being said let me get you to the integration process. So I have the Services Plus open here, and I'm going to walk you through the integrations. So uh, click on the Admin tab right here, and you can go to Apps and Add-ons. Under that, you can select the integrations, and you can click on Advanced Analytics Integration here. And let's say if you haven't set up the Analytics Plus by downloading the instance. Don't worry, you still have an option from here where you can click on the download option and then you can download the Analytics Plus application and then set it up. So once after the application is set up, you can click on the Setup Advanced Analytics Integration option, which allows you to key in the host name, the client ID and client secret, etc. So once after you enter the host name or the IP address of the machine in which you installed the analytics, you know, you have the create OAuth option enabled. So OAuth is one of the authentication method that we use for the integration for security purpose. And clicking on the OAuth will enable you to create the client ID and client secret, which are required for authenticating the integration. And then uh, the data synchronization. So this option right here, synchronize from, is something which allows you to fetch the data from the past. So right here, I would like to conduct a quick poll. Could you share how long have you been using the Service Test Plus to help me gain some insights? All right, so it looks like um, more than five years is something which is uh, you know containing the larger amount and next to that we could still see uh, a lot of people uh, with one year old so uh, in my opinion it will be always better to select the date range since when you started using the service test plus so that you can gain better insights and also you would be able to do historical analysis historical analysis All right so this synchronization from date is always modifiable. Let's say even if you have uh, selected an incorrect date, you can still come here and make changes to the dates. So once after the date is set, you can click on save and sync, which will trigger the integration, All right? So once after the integration is triggered, for every one hour, the data will be extracted from your service test plus and pushed into analytics plus. In case, if you feel that you have a data lag of 30 minutes, in that case, you have an option under additional setup called instant sync. So as you could see, by default, the sync will be set to every one hour, but you can also do an instant sync. Therefore, if you're going to present the stats in a meeting, you can show the latest data, right? So that's how easy it is for you to set up the integration with Analytics Plus. So once the integration is done, you would be able to see the workspace. So you might wonder what could be a workspace. So let me help you familiarize with the terminologies that we use in Analytics Plus. So workspace, tables, reports, and dashboards. So these are the three terminologies, or I mean, four terminologies that will be used uh, more often in the session. So let's get familiarized with it. So workspace is nothing but a place, a dedicated place where you can find the data, reports, and dashboards respectively from your service test plus. You can also call it more like a folder or a database, right? And tables, any data that you extract from your service test plus into analytics plus will be stored in the form of rows and columns. So data 
will be represented as tables in analytics plus and reports as you know better it's a better representation of your data to get the determined output and dashboards are the collection of reports in a single pane of window right so well that being said let me get you into the product so this is the workspace that got created by integrating the analytics with the services plus and as you could see on uh, the left hand side you have the data section right so this integration gives you a vast variety of uh, data sets like predefined data sets and uh, reports and dashboard this results in significant time saving because you don't have to do anything manually so it's important to note that these pre configured uh, you know data models or reports are carefully curated based on specific request from various uh, help desk managers across different industries right so as i've told you the data section holds the tables and if you look at the table let's say for example i'm picking the assets table so this asset table holds the data from your asset module i mean from the asset module in your services plus similarly if you pick the change table this holds the change data from the change module in your services plus so in a typical scenario obtaining correlated insights would require writing v lookups or formulas or uh, you know even sql queries to blend all these data together and get you a unified insight however with analytics plus you can rely on the ready to use data sets which are already been modeled in such a way that it is all linked together like it is linked to all the modules and prepared ready for the cross modular analysis right for instance to make this evident i'm going to give you a scenario where uh, we can effortlessly explore the relationship between the number of problems associated to the request and the number of incidents raised due to unsuccessful changes so by comparing the number of unsuccessful changes to the number of incidents you can gain valuable insights additionally you can discover that the number of unsuccessful changes actually increases the incident count so in this report if you could look at for the month of march and april there is a notable spike in the number of unsuccessful changes which had triggered to the spike in the number of incidents that were raised so this is the correlation that we could see and therefore we can ensure an effective change management practices in our help desk thereby making the optimal number of incidents triggered due to the changes so through seamless integration of service discourse with analytics you can harness the power of data analysis without the need for complex formulas or manual data linking the meticulously developed reports and dashboards enable you to uncover meaningful correlations identify patterns and make informed decisions to improve your help desk operation let's handle the bigger picture in this section we will delve into how tracking efficiency aligns with our webinar agenda of leveraging the performance dashboards and reports we'll explore a scenario where a specific request category experiences prolonged resolution times which is unintentionally overlooked by the help desk manager however upon realization proactive measures <laughs> excuse me proactive measures such as mentorship programs specialized trainings and dedicated agent assignment rule are implemented to address the resolution issue so continuous service improvements remains a cornerstone of the help desk operations necessitating a comprehensive report to measure the impact of these initiatives on resolution times so i'm going to introduce a report called resolution time comparison you can effortlessly compare resolution times for categorized request over a given period of time so in this report uh, the average resolution time is 
compared for this quarter, I mean, compared between this quarter versus uh, three months ago. So I'm going to consider the printer problems, for example. So normally it used to be almost four days as an average to resolve the printer problems. But through the efforts we have taken to, uh, you know, specialize the training and, uh, you know, automate the work crew assignments in terms of tickets getting assigned to people and all of that, it has considerably decreased or reduced the resolution time, which is a good sign. So thereby, from this report, we can understand that whatever steps we have taken is paying off. So thus, we were able to measure the efficiency or the effectiveness of the initiatives that we have taken to progress our health risk resolution time. So to track the efficiency furthermore, we provide uh, 300 plus predefined reports and dashboards as you could see it from the respective reports and dashboard section. So these uh, reports and dashboards serves as powerful tools for monitoring help this progress in various ways. So now that we have seen how to track the efficiency of your help desk, let's go ahead and ensure how we can enhance the help desk productivity through advanced analytics. In the fast paced world of help desk support, maximizing productivity is paramount. Imagine the possibilities of revolutionizing your help desk operation by tapping into the hidden insights within your data. One crucial element in enhancing the help desk productivity lies in the ability to forecast the outcomes based on the past data. So by leveraging advanced analytics features like forecasting and trend analysis, you can gain invaluable insights into the future performance of your help desk. So let's embark on a scenario where you find yourself needing to monitor the resolution of SLAs in your department. It is through the power of Analytics Plus that you discover an unsettling revelation. Your team is currently off the target. So to address this challenge effectively and of course securely, the necessary approval from your upper management to hire additional staff, you must present a compelling case that demonstrates the potential consequences of maintaining the current workload. So I'm going to showcase a report that tracks the SLA compliance on a trend basis. So harnessing the capabilities of surfacing forecasting algorithms, we can set to predict the SLA percentage for the next 12 months. So how to go about doing that? You can go to settings and click on the forecast and select the add forecast option where you can select the data upon which the forecasting will be done. So I'm selecting the data as percentage of request with an SLA, which is the SLA compliance that we're trying to forecast. So it's gonna be for next 12 months and I'm not going to ignore any of the past trends, right? So the results are both revealing and thought provoking because if you look at the forecast clearly indicates significant dips for various months. This in turn shows with the existing workload, we will not be able to meet our SLAs all throughout. So equipped with this compelling data, you can prepare a business case that emphasizes the urgent need to augment your help disk with an additional technician. So. Through data-driven decision-making, you can showcase how this strategic move will enhance help this productivity and ultimately drive better customer satisfaction. So now that we have forecasted the future trends and we have a strong evidence that the workload has to be uh, you know, equally distributed or we need to hire some more technicians to bear the workload and thereby ensuring the SLA or in track. So now the question arises because you've created a report that, that has the compelling data for your demand, but 
how can you effectively share this forecast in the SLA report with your manager or your upper management? Luckily, Analytics Plus offers a variety of seamless sharing options. Whether is it granting your manager the direct login access to view and access the report, or just sharing a published URL, clicking on to which he will be able to view the report without even having to log in, or if you want to ensure that your manager can effortlessly access and review the report without leaving the Service Test Plus screen, you can still do that. So let me show you how the sharing and publishing works in Analytics Plus for you know, cultivating an active collaboration. So go to Share from the report and select the Share This View option, which is very straightforward. And you can just enter the email address of the recipient. It could be a manager. And then you can click on share. So this ideally sends an email to the recipient with the link, clicking on to which they will be prompted to log into the Analytics Plus account. And after logging in, they will be able to view the reports that are being shared. And this is one way. And talking about publishing the report using a URL, you can select the URL permalink option under share which creates a URL, but you can ensure the access permission is set without login so that it will be easier for people to directly access the report without having to log into the application. So you can just share this report, I mean, share this link via email or chat, or you can make use of this URL permalink and embed this particular report in the Services Plus itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this uh, URL right here. And I'm going to use this URL to embed the report in Service Test Plus. Let's, uh, let's uh, explore how we can embed the Analytics Plus reports in Service Test Plus dashboard. So we go to the dashboard section and click on New and select New Dashboard. So I'm going to name this dashboard as SLA dashboard and I'm going to name the report as SLA compliance and I'm going to paste the URL click on save so that's it the report has been successfully embedded into your service test plus and there's no need for you to leave the service test plus application for getting better insights on your SLA compliance. So with that, we've seen how you can improve your help desk productivity uh, with respect to the Service Test Plus data. But let me tell you this, Analytics Plus is not just for your Service Test Plus, but can also connect with tons and tons of data sources we have. And here are a few data sources I would like to showcase, which connects with Analytics Plus through the out-of-the-box integration. And it is not just the data sources, you know, that can be connected apart from the Service Test Plus. There are also multiple features which complements the application. Say, for example, data blending. So data blending, we've seen how the data gets blend across various modules through the linking, uh, you know, functionality that we have within the Service Test Plus data but it can also blend the data across different applications or different data sources. And there's this option called AI Assistant, which is the Ask Zia. That is more like a chat GPT. You can just key in your questions in not plain English and it will produce the results in the form of reports. Similarly, we have a lot of features in Analytics Plus, but unfortunately, Due to time constraints, we couldn't discuss all of them in this session. So however, if you are really interested, you can always drop an email to uh, this email address so that we can discuss a lot more in detail. So that brings to the end of my session today. I hope you like the capabilities and I believe you will enable the Analytics Force integration in order to boost your helpless performance. Thank you so much for this opportunity.
and I'm looking forward to meeting you in another interesting webinar. Over to you, Jendra. Thank you, Nicholas. That was a great session. Um, I hope you guys understood a lot about Analytics Plus and how the integration works and how you know you can set it up and use it in your organization. Uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of our session. So let me just quickly go ahead and wind up. Um, let's do a quick, uh, I hope you guys can see my screen right now. All right, so let me just do a quick recap of what we saw today. So like I said earlier, today was not a very in-depth run about each feature, but it's more, uh, a more of an overview so that you are aware of all the new features that are available to you in Service Test Plus. So we are constantly listening to how you use Service Test Plus, and we love hearing how you're you know, using it to meet unique business requirements. And we are constantly trying to give you the features and enhancements that you need to make ITSM much better for your organization. So today we saw business rules, um, the enhancements for business rules, how you can integrate with Microsoft 365 to bring in license subscription details into service test plus set thresholds for your software metering to identify if software are uh, being used optimally, uh, how you can, you know, uh, the enhancements to uh, knowledge management and how you can associate solutions to incidents and service requests, uh, link them to relevant solutions. We also saw how you can, you know, um, get on the latest security trends by, you know, shifting over to Microsoft Graph for your mail server and, and various other small uh, quality of life improvements that can make things better for your organization. Please don't miss out on the resources that we have available to check out our admin guide, our release notes, the various videos that we release and write, uh, write to us, reach out to us if you have any questions and we'd help you out uh, however we can. Um, and that pretty much brings us to the end of the session. Thank you all so much. Thank you to everybody who attended and thank you to Nicholas as well for, you know, giving us a very informative session on Analytics Plus. And that's, uh, so we're going to be wrapping up season one with this session, uh, with this episode. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. And, um, you know, please do reach out to us if you need anything. Thank you all so much.